Hello and welcome to Along the Way Life's Journey. I'm your host, Carl Bucciolano, and I have a co-host with me today, as you can see, my beautiful wife, Mary Ellen, because we are coming today to you from our home at Ranchalato in preparation for one of the greatest holidays of the year. This is November. So guess what day that is? Right. And so we have a question for you. And this is a very important question. And the question is this. Turkey or not turkey? <laughs> that is the question. Do you have turkey and all the stuffings? Or do you have veggie lasagna? <laughs> what is your tradition? <laughs> well, we're going to talk a little bit about our traditions and so much more. Right. So I'm going to start because I'm from Massachusetts the state where the first Thanksgiving took place many, many years ago. And the tradition in my home with a family of eight, growing up, I was in the in the 50s when I was a little girl, 19, in the mid 50s, early 60s. And our tradition was, like many of you, uh, turkey in the oven, stuffing, real cranberry sauce because, <laughs> hey, Massachusetts, and all the pumpkin pie. I remember the, the the turkey in the oven with the steam on the kitchen window and the leaves were already fallen by then because uh, it was the end of November in, in Massachusetts. And so we would kick the leaves and rake the leaves and boy, we just couldn't wait to dive in and get everybody around the table for that turkey. I mean, it was a happy time. It was a very happy time as a child. So, Carl, what was your tradition like growing up? Well, we didn't quite have the pilgrims and the uh, Native Americans there because I grew up in Brooklyn. And I grew up in a large Sicilian family in Brooklyn. That meant on Thanksgiving, all the members of the family came together to, to share a meal together. Now, in, in an Italian household, we wanted to be traditional Americans. So we made turkey and cranberry sauce and all the other stuff to be eaten after the antipasto, the pasta, <laughs> the meatballs, the risotto, the steps out, the chokes, the mushrooms. By the time we got through and all of that, nobody wanted the turkey. But <laughs> tradition, you have to eat the turkey. Tradition. So, <laughs> so we would eat the turkey. And uh, of course, being in, in New York at that time, uh, we had a little television set. And many of us would, of the kids, we would huddle around the TV set and we'd watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade coming down New York, you know, with the, the colors in the trees and the big balloons held on by 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 ropes and they were floating in the air and they'd, they'd come down in front of Macy's and everybody would go, oh, look at that, look There's at that. The marching band. And and the marching. Of course, nowadays they have big 80-inch TV screens. You can see things. When we had it, it was a little round thing like that. And I have a magnifying glass. It was so exciting. What the highlights of the parade was always, remember? The last slide was Santa coming in. And that was officially opening the Christmas season right. in New York. That's right. And how much fun that was. That's right. And we would have wonderful times after dinner and we'd play touch football out in the yard and get together, you know, in the evening as it got dark and play penny poker or a game which was called uh, set them in, which is an Italian for seven and a half. It's like 21, but they use seven and a half points. <laughs> so that was, it was really quite different than Mary Ellen experienced in right. New England. Well, I'm sure as many of you, uh, you know, watching, have your traditions of, of family coming to the door. Some of them just down the street. Some of them would actually travel, uh, you know, across the state, across the miles to come and gather at that table and be together, share stories, hugs, you know, just uh, the little children running around and and uh, the women hectic in the in the kitchen. I mean, it, it was fabulous. It and was I, just fabulous. And I'll bet in New England in November, in late November, you often had snow for Thanksgiving. Sometimes, but yeah. So once in a while we did, we yeah. did, but it was cold. It was always cold. Yeah. And my mother oftentimes would cook in a pressure cooker. And if you've ever cooked, I don't know, does anybody cook in a pressure cooker anymore? But the, with the little... No, we live our lives in a pressure cooker. The little... <laughs> <laughs> but the little steam uh, release on top of the pressure cooker. And I just remember hearing that thing, jiggle, 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 with the steam, with the steam. And all those sounds and sights... Of, of Thanksgiving, you know, era gone by are still so fresh in our memory. You know, we live in Florida. However, for those of you who can see, okay, we have our otter here in South Florida. I just had 
One of them leaves falling. That's right. It's like that. <laughs> so, yes, right. Fall, the falling leaves. But then, as time went on, and as we grew older, we 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 became more aware of Thanksgiving was more than just a time of a big meal, a big feast. Much more. We became aware of you know what was going on in the world, and we can't help but reflect on a time in American history when our president at the time, in January 6, 1941, President uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he gave an address known as the Four Freedoms. It was technically the 1941 State of the Union Address, and he purposed four fundamental freedoms that people everywhere in the world ought to enjoy. And I'm going to tell you the four freedoms. As a matter of fact, um, Norman Rockwell did these four paintings, which are uh, famous. You can look them up, or maybe we'll include them here. But the freedoms are freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. And I would encourage all of you to go and Google that message and, and listen to it again. But do we still have those freedoms in our country today, Carl? What do you think? I believe they are still alive in our country today, but we are battling to keep them. And we must remember that when he gave this address, it was just coming out of the end of the Depression, which is why he said freedom from want. We were just emerging into a terrible war that was beginning in Europe, which we were not in yet, but soon would be. And people were being persecuted and killed for their faith. And that's why he said freedom of, of worship. And that's why he said freedom from fear. And that, And people spoke out against these things. And some people tried to repress it, but the good of the all was had. And that's why he said freedom of speech, because we all have the right to speak out, especially in this country. We just went through an election and whatever the result of the election is, it doesn't matter really. What matters is American traditions and values held true. The people spoke, more people voted than ever in history. And we must always preserve it. We must remember, my wife just mentioned Norman Rockwell. He came out with the, the paintings of the Four Freedoms that became enormously popular during the 50s and 60s in the United States. Virtually every home had one or more of them. And they came out at the time when we were living after the war was over. But we had also gone through the Korean War. And now we had Sputnik in the air, a satellite put up by the communist Russians to go around the world that people had other reasons to fear for. Right. And so here we are in the 21st century. The world is coming closer and closer to the break with people disagreeing again. And what do we have left? We have left what we've had from the beginning, the freedom to give thanks, to recognize that there is a, a God, a creator far greater than us. And if we give thanks to him, he will guide us through this as he has done through everything else. So as we, you know, reflected a little bit on our traditions, you know, back um, in our time growing up, you know, in the 50s and 60s, um, and I just have to, you know, I have to put a plug, I'm not getting paid for this, but if any of you ever make it to Massachusetts, and if you love American history, there is a living history museum. There's two of them in Massachusetts. One is called Old Sturbridge Village, and that's in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. And the other one is Plymouth Plantation. Now, as a fine artist, I have depicted scenes of American history. And that's the collection is called Era Gone By. So I used to travel up to these living history museums in Massachusetts, Old Sturbridge Village and Plymouth Plantation. Now, I'll never forget the time I went to Plymouth Plantation. This is a reenactment of the earliest settlement of the Native Americans and the Pilgrims. And they reenact the very first Thanksgiving here in the United States. And so as an American history artist, I had to depict something from that time in American history. So my sister took me and I went with my camera. And what I used to do is I would travel to these living history museums and I would photograph the reenactors and then come home and do my paintings. And so we're gonna insert the painting I did uh, of the Native American from Plymouth Plantation. And the title of the piece is called So Beautiful. But I have to tell you kind of a funny story when I was actually walking around. Uh, and of course, you mingle in with the native, uh, with, with the reenactors. 
So I had my camera and I'm walking through and there were some pilgrims and they were like, you know, cooking in the kitchen and some of them were working out in their gardens. And I walked into one of the houses and I, and I said to one of the reenactors, I said, I'm a, a fine artist and I, and I paint American history. Can I take your picture? And the reenactor looked at me and she goes, what Taoist is a picture? <laughs> and I go, well, you know, with the camera, you know, I want to take a picture so that I can have a picture to use when I do the painting. She goes, what Taoist is a camera? What Taoist is a picture? And I'm like, you're not going to work with me. <laughs> they say in the natural vernacular and English of that period of time, these reenactors, you could not get them to step out of anything that was futuristic. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, they're not going to work with me. So I just have to walk around and just do a shoot and hope for the best. And I got a beautiful picture of this fantastic Native American and he's making a, a ladle. If you ever get up to New England, go check out Sturbridge Village and Plymouth Plantation because it is going back in time. It is fabulous to get a real sense of our American history. Yeah, it was great. It's better than going back to Abbotsfield. It really is. Going back to where? <laughs> to where? Abbotsfield is the ballpark that the Brooklyn Dodgers used to play. <laughs> happy memory. Actually, a happy memory was when you took me to Service Hills for the first time. I was oh, so yeah. impressed with it. Yeah. We went into a chapel that had been standing there from the early 1700s. And you go in the pews, and there is the... Oh. the the uh, premisal there and the the sermon that was delivered by a pastor in that very church to General Washington before he commanded the colonial army. Yeah, I mean, with such hope for the future yeah. and giving such thanks to God, really it was wonderful. Really, a wonderful experience. Exactly. And so, you know, as as we look back and we look at our family traditions, you know, some some family traditions are predominantly around gathering together, which is a good thing. And feasting, a great meal, and that's a good thing. And fun and fellowship and some households watch uh, football, some go out and play football in the backyard. It's all good things. But when you really, when we really start thinking about what the true meaning of Thanksgiving is, it is much deeper. It is much deeper. It's what are we thankful for in our life today? And as Carl touched upon the four freedoms, the freedom of speech, the freedom of worship, the freedom from want, and the freedom from fear. And so, Carl, out of these four freedoms, which one highlights to you at this moment? Which one uh, is... Well... I know which one I'm going to talk about. I, I know that. I know that with what's going on in the world today, the freedom... The freedom of worship is, to me, the most important because uh, I, as you know, we both, we gather together every morning for our devotions to give thanks to, to God and to carry us through another day. And I see what's happening around the world and so many people are being persecuted for faith. And I think it's a, it's a very serious issue that's growing throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I can't help but attach freedom from fear to freedom of worship. Mm -hmm. Because when we come to a place in a country where people are persecuted for their faith, there is always fear because there is always repercussions and violence. It's happened throughout the centuries and it's happening again. Right. And so, you know, freedom of speech, to be able, you know, to live in a country where we have these four freedoms still, some of them are being challenged. You know, and as people go to, as Carl said, as people go to the voting booth, this is where you get to save the four freedoms. That's right. But to be able to speak, to be able to speak freely, you know, to be able to worship, of course, that's my number one. Freedom from what? How we're very, I mean, everybody has something that they want. Let's put it this way. We all have a wish list or a prayer list. No one ever has a perfect life here on earth. So there are wants. There are wants and there are needs, you know, and then the freedom from fear. And I think that when they spoke about the freedom of fear, it was probably like a world war or just coming out of war and that, those types of fears. But people live with a lot of different types of fears in the course of every day. Fear of, can I feed my family? Fear, am I going to be able to pay my rent? Fear of, is somebody sick? You know, there's a lot of fears 
and anxieties that we have naturally, that we have to have a place to take those fears. And so we're so grateful and thankful that we have the freedom to worship. Because when we worship, we be we are able to draw close to the, the one true and living God. And he knows our heart. He knows our needs before we even ask him. And he hears our prayers. And so that leads us to today. And I wanted to share a tradition that Carl and I have started recently. And uh, we're just really, really enjoying it. Now, this tradition, let me paint the backdrop of this tradition. As some of you may know from watching Carl's show or knowing him personally, about 11 years ago, Carl suffered a stroke. And the four, the five doctors that treated him in the hospital, they all agreed, they all concurred that they felt that Carl shouldn't have made it through the night. And yet, over 11 years later, Ta-da! here he is. <laughs> and so if any one of you have ever had a situation where you had a life-threatening situation, I do believe it impacts you to appreciate every day like you like you never did before that situation happened. And so after that happened to Carl, when we would do our morning devotions, he would just say, I'm thankful for one more day of life. And so this became like a, a mantra for us, thankful for one more day of life because he shouldn't have been here. And yet here he is. And so we just decided that when we sit in the morning and we have our coffee, we also do our morning prayers in our tradition. And I said, you know, Thanksgiving is a day to be thankful, but we have, we've made it a tradition to be thankful every single day. Every single day, we're thankful that we have another day. And so being an artist and a creative artist and a visual artist, I came up with this idea. We sit in the dining, in, in our living room and we have a coffee table and on the coffee table, usually there's really nothing on the coffee table. But I saw in my mind's eyes to put a gift box because Carl always said, I'm thankful for one more, for the gift, for the gift of one more day of life. And so it was a gift. And I said, you know, every day is a gift. As a matter of fact, they say, today is a present. Yesterday's not here, is gone, and tomorrow is not here yet, but today is a present. You're present in today. So I thought, I'm gonna do a visual. Now, if you look at this gift box, the box itself, it's gold color. And that gold symbolizes a scripture in, in the book of Job, where Job said, he knows the way that I take. And when I have been tested and tried, I will come forth as pure gold. Now you see the lid on this box is white and that is the covering. And the covering is a white and pure holy God. Now, when you look at the ribbon, the ribbon is musical notes. And what do we do when we get up and thank God for one more day? We praise him. We praise him in prayer. Sometimes Carl and I will even sing a worship song together. <laughs> and the three bows, you go in red, white, and blue. That's, you would think the United States, right? Well, it could be because it's red, white, and blue. But these color bows represent the white is the purity and holiness of God the Father. The blue represents the Holy Spirit, living water. One of the names of the Holy Spirit is he is living water. And the red, of course, represents Jesus Christ, the blood, the red that saved us. And so when we get up in the morning, every morning, Carl and I look at this box and we're reminded that today is a gift, one more day of life. And so when we open up the box, what do we have inside? The greatest gift God has given us is his word. And there's a Bible in there. But a, a, a new part of the tradition that we just started adding is I have a journal. And the journal book is in the box. And every morning when Carl and I are having our coffee, we've decided that we're going to reflect on the day before. And we are going to journal Carl's and mine the blessing that we had or the blessings that we had the day before. And we're going to, it's going to be like a diary, kind of like a journey. And it's just like one sentence or one word, but we'll reflect on the day before and we'll say, how did God bless us? And we're starting to write it down every day. And it's becoming like a diary journal book of blessings. And I'll tell you that an attitude of gratitude is, it's contagious. 
Matter of fact, I have to say yesterday in recording this yesterday, I had a really, really bad day in my personal circumstances. And I thought, what am I going to put as the entry in my journal? Well, when I looked at it and reflected, you know, what happened yesterday and the discouragement I faced and whatever, I said, you know, God, how do we take this negative and draw out the positive? And I said, you know what? God was using that situation to grow me and make me stronger in my faith and in my attitude. And so I said, you know what? There was a blessing yesterday, even though at, at first glance, it looked like a really bad day. I said, I've learned something from that, which I'm going to take forward to strengthen me. And so I would encourage all of you, if you have a place where you start your day with your coffee, to put a little gift box next to it and a little journal, journal book and start recording the blessings in your life. You know, an attitude of gratitude. And so we take the tradition of Thanksgiving Day and we take it daily throughout the year with that attitude of gratitude, blessing box. And so I hope that idea encourages you. We started doing it. And I'll tell you, it makes all the difference in the way we jumpstart our day. So Carl, what do you have to add? Well, the only thing I'd have to add to that is that uh, I think a blessing shared is a blessing multiplied. Yes. Anytime you're given a gift of a blessing or something that enriches you, it's such a wonderful thing to share it with someone else. And especially if you come across someone in your life or you know someone in your life that needs a little extra support. That's right. Tell them you love them today. That's right. Tell them you love them today. It's such an important thing. And share the blessing with them. So don't wait for the special day. Yeah. Don't wait for when your hair looks good. Yeah. So tell everyone right. every time you see them. That's right. How important they are to you. That's right. And and I would and I have to personally say, and I'm and, and I'm so proud and I'm privileged to have the freedom of speech to say this, that the things I'm the most thankful for in my life, and it's in priority, is my personal relationship with the true and living God. And then that I am his, and I know that I'm his, and he is mine. And I'm thankful for this little book right here. His word. This is the handbook of life. This is God's love letter to us and his handbook for life. And then I'm thankful for my husband and my marriage. And I'm thankful for all the blessings of the people, family, and friends that God has put in my path to share and walk this journey with me. And so, you know, there's, there's a verse in the Bible that says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. He is good. His love and mercies endure forever. So this Thanksgiving, we are thankful for the love of God, the love of family and country, and family and friends. And we're just so thankful right Carl? absolutely so share your thanks thankfulness with others share your abundance with others i'm sure you, you, all of you know a place where they are feeding the homeless this yes. year do you share yep do you share even if it's just to send a check do you help out yep. do what you yep. can yep. because we are none of us here forever do you share do you share that's right because you will have a joyful heart you know you know how to, you know how to find joy this is how we find joy you take the word J-O-Y, we put Jesus first, others second, and you last on bended knee. And if you put your priorities where they need to be, no matter what your circumstances is, you will have his joy. I think I smell the turkey. Oh! So we're going to have to close this show, folks, because the cranberry is ready. Remember, what do we tell everyone? Love somebody love today. We love you. Bye -bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. May it be blessed and joyful. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning into the show. I hope that it resonated with you. It certainly did with me. And I hope it encouraged you to realize the true power of your story. As a reminder, new episodes will be released Wednesday mornings on your favorite podcast apps and also on YouTube as well. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn your notification button on to ensure that you receive updates on new episode releases. I'm grateful for your reviews and your support. The love is certainly felt. Keep it coming. You can reach out to connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, or stop by my website to everypageattorning.com. 
All links are clickable in the show notes for quick access. Do you think that you or someone you know may be our most inspiring guest yet? Let's hope so. Click on our contact page and get in touch on my website and share your story. I look forward to reading each one person. My best-selling book, To Every Page of Turning, which was published by Mascot Books, is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, and many more popular book retailers. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Till next time, remember that every day is a new opportunity to write your new page in your incredible journey. And it is incredible. You're the only one who has it.